Well, we have a long title for this thing. <laughs> There's Kanye West and the Paradox of Black Male Identity in Hip Hop, which is a long title. But the really simplest way to think about that is that we're going to talk about a few things about, uh, uh, yeah, hip hop, male identity. Some of it with reference to Kanye West, who I think is an interesting figure. Um, and we're going to talk for about, um, we're going to talk for a period of time, and we're going to leave, make sure we leave some time for uh, questions from the audience. Um, and you know, to talk about uh, these issues. So what, what we're going to do? We're going to talk as a group. I'm going to kind of open up with a few kind of uh, comments and a couple of slides, just to kind of give us some of the terrain, and we'll kind of talk more broadly. But uh, I'm Echo Esh, and I'm the kind of chair this afternoon, but also kind of one of the panel here. I'm delighted uh, to be uh, joined by my kind of uh, fellow panelists. Uh, to my immediate right, uh, Matthew Ryder QC, is one of the country's leading barristers on, on a kind of range of issues and an articulate uh, talker and thinker on a, on a number of issues, including hip hop. Um, and also uh, Marlon James, uh, Booker Prize winning author, uh, who uh, in these kind of uh, kind of literary friendly uh, surroundings and needs little introduction apart from say one of the most kind of perceptive uh, writers uh, uh, and novelists of our time and rightly recognized uh, for his work uh, uh, with um, uh, Short History of Southern Killings. Um, uh, just, uh, just to kind of um, open things up a little bit then, just want to kind of talk through a couple of things. Um, uh, you know, first of all, why Kanye? Um, think you know, Kanye is a sort of interesting subject, I think, in as much as, you know, everyone's got an opinion <laughs> on him. Um, uh, you know, if we'd been having this conversation like a few years ago, we'd have been talking about public enemy or something. We'd been talking about these kind of figures that have this kind of uh, sort of political and social role. But actually, Kanye's biggest impact, I think, is one of actually do personality. Mm -hmm. Like, as well as music, his music is art, and I think uh, it kind of makes extraordinary music and so on. But it's very rare that you meet a figure a uh, black figure, a kind of hip-hop figure, who so divides and confuses and confounds and excites in terms of their personality, I think. And I want to elaborate on that for a couple of minutes and then open it up to, um, uh, to conversation. Um, so I think Kanye is an interesting figure uh, because of what he does and because of who he is, but also because of the times we live in. Because we live at this time when actually black male visibility is higher than possibly any moment in history. Obama in the White House, you know, your Jay-Z's of the world, all sorts of figures in music and acting and literature who are achieving prominence. And simultaneously at the same time, we're in a position where in America you can be shot dead in the streets by law enforcement officers for being black. Uh, so you've got this time of kind of high visibility but also high uh, vulnerability. And actually Kanye kind of uh, expresses both of those uh, at once. So I just kind of want to talk through just a couple of things really quickly. Um, we're going to touch on three areas. The first of all being, yeah, Kanye West and double consciousness. <laughs> um, so very quickly, probably most people are kind of familiar with this kind of co concept of double consciousness, which is this idea that, um, that W.B. Du Bois came up with uh, in the early 20th century, where he talked about uh, this sense of always looking at oneself through the eyes of others, of measuring one's soul by the tape of a world that looks on in amused content and pity. This idea, basically, that as a black person, you're always aware that other people are looking at you and how you deal with that experience. And I think one of the ways that Kanye deals with exactly that, it's a kind of common universal experience for black people, one of the ways he does that is through uh, this thing that he does, one of his most characteristic traits, his rants so-called. So Kanye's always ranting, gets the fashion industry, Taylor Swift, Beck, all sorts of things. Um, and I'm kind of interested in what he means when he says that. What does he mean when he says, I'm running for president? What does he mean when he says, I'm a god? You know, what does he mean when he, you know, when he says, well, I'm the next Steve Jobs, I'm Warhol, I'm Shakespeare in the flesh, I'm Walt Disney, Nike, Google. What does he mean? Mm -hmm. You know, um, uh, partly, you know, some people take that as a sign that he's kind of crazy and foolish, so Pink doesn't like him, you know. Um, Liam Gallagher doesn't like him. You know, and the question is, is he really being serious? You know, when he says he's a genius. You know, when he says, what is that? For me to say I, I, was, I wasn't a genius, I'd just be lying to you and to me, and to me myself. You know, what does he mean when he says all of this? Um, is he being ironic? Is he being serious? And I actually think, the thing is, I think he's working within a great 
tradition of, sort of black oral invention. Mm -hmm. So Zora Neale Hurston says this great thing. Zora Neale Hurston says that language is like money, which is to say that uh, it's a, it's a, language is like a very labile currency. It can mean lots of things. It can take lots of different shapes. But particularly for black people, it's something they're especially rich in, haven't been denied so much in other areas of life. Mm -hmm. um, and basically, Kanye is working in the same tradition that Zora Neale Hurston ch cherished as a folklorist, that Chester Himes uses in novels, that, Mal that, that Muhammad Ali uses, that Richard Pryor uses, this thing of black... Yeah, James black, Brown. James Brown, all of these people that use that level of invention. You know, Henry Louis Gates talks about signifying, but really, what Kanye is about is being able to talk about more than one thing at the same time to say more than one thing at the same time, to mean more than one thing at the same time. That's what that tradition is, and that's what Kanye, I think, uh, is kind of particularly genius in, of being annoying and open at the same time. Just a couple more quick things. Um, <coughs> Kanye West on fashion. Uh, so again, Kanye is one of the sort of first rappers to kind of embrace high-end directional fashion. Here he is in a Givenchy kilt. Um, it's a great kind of thing. He wore, so he wore a kilt a couple of years ago to the VMAs. Uh, not everyone was happy. Mm -hmm. Do you remember Brand Nubian? You yeah. Brand yeah. Nubian? So Lord Jamar of Brand Nubian, he wasn't happy. Uh, so Brand, so he, d yeah, he kind of, so Lord Jamar, who's kind of old school hip hop artist, wrote, he did a track called Lift Up Your Skirt. He called, he did it, had a tweeted, you know, tweeted Kanye with a hashtag half fag, called Kanye yeah. the pioneer of this queer shit in hip hop. Which is funny for a guy who was jumping around naked on a prison TV yeah. show. Oh, you know, all good signs, basically all good signs that Kanye is doing something right. That's the point, you know. So he's kind of riling up the homophobes, but more than that, he's also, again, working in another tradition, I think, which is about dress as a means of resistance. So there's a long tradition that goes back to slavery, in fact, where... Uh, if you look at kind of historical records of slaves, kind of runaway slaves, kind of there were, there were adverts for runaway slaves put in American kind of uh, newspapers and stuff. Very often they describe slaves by means of dress. They talk about this particular uh, person being uh, addicted to dress or remarkably fond of dress or generally dressy or very fond of showy dress because there was a kind of tradition among slaves that you kind of scrounge or steal kind of bits of clothing, scraps of kind of cloth and you stitch them into quite brightly coloured clothes and you kind mm. of borrow buttons and so on and so on. Um, the historian Monica Miller has written a whole book about what she calls redemptive narcissism, which is a great term, I think, to describe how black people use dress mm. and dandyism as a means of resistance and self-definition, as a way to stand out from the crowd, especially at a time when, again, you could be, be hunted down or killed then, now, for standing out too much. So actually, you see that especially in music. You see that in, you know, Sun Ra or George Clinton or Andre 3000. These figures who use clothes, who use dress to magnify their presence and to, and to underscore that that is a way of turning kind of black hypervisibility on its head, of being more than hypervisible, being super visible, about being visible on your own terms. And I think that's what Kanye is doing in part when he's wearing a kilt. But what he's also doing is rejecting notions of the authentic black masculine of the kind of Lord Jamar school. So just as a final point then, before we open up to audience, think about authenticity just for a further moment. Um, because it's kind of worth, in hip hop terms, it's worth going back a few years to, uh, to when Everything about hip-hop was about keeping it real, too black, too strong, America's most wanted thug life. Everything was about this very particular notion of what, it, what you should look like as a black man. So some examples, it's Ice Cube with a big gun, uh, it's DMX with his dogs, uh, <laughs> it's 50 Cent with his muscles and, and another gun. And, you know... You had, this, you, know, you had this real sense that, that, that an authentic black masculinity was to do with, with something fixed in the skin, you know, mm. that could only be expressed through strength, through musculature, that couldn't be about conceding vulnerability or fragility. So one of my favorite hip hop moments of all time, possibly, is around 2008, 2009, when Kanye and 50 Cent both have albums out in the same month. Mm -hmm. um, Kanye's releasing 808 and Heartbreaks, 50's got The Massacre or some other album. And, and if you remember, like, Fiddy challenges Kanye. Mm. And the idea is that whoever sells less in their opening week has to get out of the game. 
has to get the hell out of Dodge because there's not room for both of them. And also, these are about two competing philosophies of hip-hop and two competing philosophies of what being a man are. Mm -hmm. So one is about the external strength, all of this. Kanye's thing, by contrast, especially actually with the album, is about openness, uh, unsentimentality, about talking about fear, about loss, about heartbreak, about confusion, all sorts of things that are archetypally very unmasculine. And so you had this kind of really interesting head-to-head -head between these two figures. You know, first week sales come out, Kanye's way ahead of 50 Cent. And in a way, actually what happened, happened along the lines that 50 Cent anticipated. One of them really did get out of the game. So now, you look at 50 Cent, that stuff looks ridiculous. At one point, he was the biggest name in hip-hop. Now it looks completely anachronistic. Mm -hmm. So you're kind of bare man with muscles. You see a lot of them around still, but the sort of, <laughs> but the kind of, you know, the sort of discourse for openness and kind of emotional range that Kanye started to introduce into hip-hop, I think it's had, it's had an effect. You know, you wouldn't have the sort of Drakes of the world. You wouldn't have, to some extent, Kendrick Lamar, uh, Kid Cudi. You wouldn't have these people mm -hmm. if it wasn't for some of that charity. But also, I think it's had a larger effect for black maleness in general. I think we're at an interesting place right now where it's not easy, but certainly amongst black men, there's a bit more readiness to talk about who you are and what's inside you than there used to be, certainly when uh, there, was, there were less possibilities for how you should look as a black man and how you should mm -hmm. comport yourself. So I kind of give credit to Kanye across those areas. And I just wanted to introduce that stuff as a beginning, just not to kind of necessarily determine what we should talk about, but just to say that I feel there's quite a lot of ground and that's why mm. I think why we can talk about Kanye West as a sort of headline figure for all of these things. But mm. I don't know if... So I'm kind of playing a dual role of mm. chair and participating, but <laughs> Marlon, do you want to... Well, I was just thinking, you know, some of the stuff you, you mentioned. Um, there's an essay... I can't remember who wrote it. It was in Spin, and it was a review of Goldie's second album. Don't buy it. Um, <laughs> and she, the, I'll never forget the lines. So it ties into it. She says, but elegance is the ultimate black rebellion. That, yeah, the, the point is to, with my, my meager resources, the, my whatever, I'm going to end up looking cooler than you. And everything I bought, I bought at Walmart. <laughs> but I'm going to be cooler than you. Mm. And I'm going to smell better than you. And I don't come out, I don't leave. It's, 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 it's a part of, a, of, of like the whole, when I hear sometimes like my white friends, you know, say, yeah, just meet me in 10 minutes, just come. I, no, no, black, a black person can't just come. I got to bathe, I got to shower, I got to do this, I got to do that. It's like, no, I don't leave, no. I don't, this sort of, there's no such thing as, a be, as black bedhead. No. <laughs> it's, 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 because I, I never, and it, and it, and it actually plays in big ways. It, it's interesting seeing how it actually grates against feminism. Because the black feminist is, no, I want my makeup. We accept to step out without my heels, mm -hmm. are you on crack? <laughs> and uh, whereas they're like great against so all that's that's a patriarchy or so on. So, so, so is, this, is this a good or a bad thing that appears? I think it's a, a good thing. I think it's because it's, but it ties into what you're saying. It's a huge continuum of how can that person in, who in, in such a, uh, an indigent status, such a lower status, such a whatever, still manage to look cooler, like such and such than me, uh, cooler than me. Uh, Miles Davis was cool before fashion designers found him. Mm -hmm. It's like when, when George Clinton said, I was always cool, I just didn't have no groove. Uh, it's, I think, and, and I think Kanye ties into that. Um, the one thing I'd say also is, in a lot of ways, Kanye, to me, is, is sort of a return to that sort of varying ideas about, and, and, and we could argue, there could be a mm -hmm. whole idea of when that 50 cent arg ideal came in. To me, it was the early 90s. There's this great song, it's not a great song, <laughs> that... Um, mm -hmm that Lords of the Underground did call Who Got the Props. Oh, yeah. And, and it was a list of which rappers get props and which rappers do not. Mm -hmm. So Cypress Hill gets props, RC Development does not. Mm -hmm. And it was somebody drawing battle lines yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. as to what is a, not just what is a, who gets props, but who's a man, who's a hip-hop archetype, who should follow. And, and, it's, as, and it's as invented as any, every other thing. It's... it's it's like B Boy 2.0. Yeah. It, it's, it's as if even the, the, the sort of re, the 50 Cent is an invention. Yeah. Um, just as though Ice Cube is an invention. 
And that's all. I think that's cool too. But well, I you... think, yeah, but I, I do think that, I mean, if you go back and look at, at Grandmaster Fashion and the Furious Five, they look like they came out of a Funkadelic video. Mm. When they weren't, when Dr. Dre, World Class Working Crew, looked like Prince on a Budget. Dr. Dre was wearing makeup. He was yeah. wearing makeup. He looked like Prince on a Budget. Yeah. Uh, so they, yeah. Uh, so I, 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 I think it's in some ways a kind of a return yeah. to a sort of, of, of glamour. Yeah, like, I think that's mm. a good point. Matthew? Um, well, I think it's really interesting to be here talking about Kanye West because uh, uh, definitely I think he's probably the most interesting, most important, most uh, talented and, mm. and clever artist uh, making music, hip-hop music certainly, but making music at the moment. I mean, if you think about his work, as somebody that has, you know, grown up into hip hop, you know, I'm a lawyer, but you know, m my life has been lived in outside of jobs like the rest of us. And and you know, his first three albums, you know, are great hip hop albums. You know, he was famous at the beginning for that kind of speeded up sample. Mm. You know, they were funny, clever hip hop albums. You know, um, and then suddenly, you know, from about 2008, 808s and Heartbreak, that is like a kind of momental mm. mind mm. shift in hip hop music that no one had really thought of before. You know, you're talking about taking yourself back to a kind of, paring it down to a kind of Depeche mode mm -hmm. kind of drum machine. And, you know, you're singing through a, a you know, auto tune, making new music. Mm. And really the last three albums, you know, 808's Heartbreak, you know, My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy and Yeezus mm -hmm. are a complete departure into yeah. a kind of new idea of hip hop that makes what happened before that seem really old and tired and from a past that has it seems so distant you know you forget mm -hmm. really that you know jay-z emerged in the 90s at around the time of biggie when hip-hop was about old samples and dance music and mm -hmm. just and, and the kind of rap music that was just getting you know clever and more polished but trying to become pop music you know we all remember kind of you know uh Ja Rule and that kind of, you know, that kind of era yeah. of the 2000s, yeah. oh, you know, with that kind of Hello. pop rap, right? Exactly, yeah. you know? Yeah. And you all have a kind of, we all have a nagging affection for it, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But Kanye, like, emerged at that time and has completely surpassed it, you know? I mean, to, to kind of try and get across to people the kind of how I feel that his genius has kind of permeated kind of popular culture, you know, like, I mean, it's going to sound like name-dropping stories here, but you know, go please. I'm not an artist, but I know artists. So, <laughs> so um, I, uh, I remember you and other people telling me about a, a, a painter called Lynette Yonboyaki, who, who um, uh, in, in, ended up being a Turner Prize nominee. Fantastic, talented British artist. And um, on that recommendation, I went to a studio, saw some of her work, thought she was great. And I remember telling two of my friends, David Adjay, the architect, and Chris Ophelia, the artist, you know, they should check her stuff out. So we truck along down to her studio in East London. It's freezing cold. She's got all these pictures everywhere. Three artists and me, you know, trying to like look at her work. Mm -hmm. And it's a kind of awkward conversation. Mm -hmm. And the icebreaker is Kanye. Yeah. Here are these three sort of giants of creative minds. Mm -hmm. And the first thing they want to speak about is Yeezus and how, what an interesting album it was. And suddenly the conversation starts flowing. I remember Zadie Smith wanted to wrote a book called NW and she wanted to talk, it's about a lawyer, so she wanted to talk to me about what it was to be a black lawyer. So we went out for lunch and I can't remember, Kanye had done one of his crazy stupid things the day before, you know, in the newspapers or whatever. Mm -hmm. And Zadie Smith starts pouring out with how Kanye West is a genius. You know, mm -hmm. Zadie Smith, who is not, if you know her, she's not um, overly uh, not careless with her compliments, culture, yeah. right? She's yeah. not overly careless with her compliments. She's a fantastic writer. She starts pouring out can't, I can't stop her in the conversation though, about how Kanye West is so amazing. <laughs> yeah. So there's this kind of idea that Kanye, amongst everybody who's in the creative, got a creative mind, that Kanye is mm. this figure that is setting the standard. Yeah. Where I think though, so I could talk forever, yeah. as you can tell, about Kanye's music, right? What I think is, where I, where I take slight issue with, with some of the things you're saying, is I think we can be a bit too generous about Kanye West being some new idea of black masculinity. I'm mm -hmm. not sure I buy that. Because what I find really frustrating and paradoxical about Kanye West is that here is somebody who is determined artistically to move out of cliche, to not fit the kind of stereotypes of what it is to be a black musician mm -hmm. and what black music is about. But yet, his, the tropes which he feels he's trapped in of being what it is to be black, that everything is about niggers, bitches, hoes, you know, that, that still he's like 
got to be projecting this idea of what it is mm. to be a black man that is within all these kind of this type of vocabulary, this type of way of seeing the world. You know, whether we, if we want to admit it or not, a lot of his stuff is pretty misogyn misogynistic, like a lot of hip hop is. Mm -hmm. And a lot of his stuff is really within the same stereotypes of what it is to be a black man in America. So, mm -hmm. what in a sense, I'm not blaming him for no. it, but what in a sense I'm saying is that he reveals that even when you are a groundbreaking artist, you still feel you have to subscribe to these mm. ways of behaving and these ways of speaking yeah. and these, these types of exchanges, particularly when it comes to women, mm. that are just not really mm. appropriate. And you, for, for some reason, mm. as black men, we can't seem to step out of that, even when we've got this groundbreaking mm. yeah. cultural artistic talent. I, totally. I, the, the, when, I, when I first heard New Slaves, mm. I was like, holy shit. Yeah. Can you imagine an entire album like that? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Even even um, Black Skinhead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even even when he it's like an adamant track. Right? Yeah, and even when even when he, one of my problems with with Kanye is one of my problems with a lot of rappers. They, they, they always drop simplistic solutions to complex problems, and even all even though his solution to to uh, at the end of Black Skinhead is just basically screw his way out of it. You know, they, 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 they um, translate it sexually. Mm. Um, I still thought an album, an whole album as progressive as that would have been, a, a, would have been the ground changer we all say it is. Mm. Um, but he does fall back into these, and I think sometimes he, I don't know if he does it because I'm just going to screw with everybody, including people who expect more of me. Um, <laughs> but, but, mm. but, but at the same time, I just don't know if he's thinking that deep. That yeah. I think that was one of the things that I found very frustrating about that record. That I was like, but after all of this, the only reason why you're taking Strange Fruit to talk about groupie trouble yeah, yeah, yeah. is because Same. you feel it can take Strange Fruit to talk about groupie trouble. Yeah. And I agree that and that type of outrage is not new either. But there's a yeah. lyric in New Slay, there's a lyric in, excuse my profanity mm. here, right? But there's a yeah. lyric in New Slay where he says, you know, I'd rather be a dick than a swallower. Mm. Right? Uh -huh. so excuse me, everybody. Now, it's him. Like, but but <laughs> what, what is that yeah. saying? What yeah. is that saying? What is that? That's a kind of, it's a clever lyric in one sense, but it's a fucked up, excuse mm. my language, like a messed up lyric. It is well, a pretty messed up lyric. It's, because it's, what you're saying, what you're saying is like that somehow, yeah, that's that, it. That's that's sexual activity, the is, there's a loser and a winner. There's a there's a there's mm. someone who's on, who's mm. who's in the in the position of power and there's someone who's in the subordinate. I, th I think that's yeah. not okay. That's yeah. in a sense, Kanye, however groundbreaking is, it's not De La Soul in a sense of rewriting what the image is of being a black person within hip hop. Mm -hmm. It's doing amazing music, but still locked into, trapped in yeah. the stereotype that which most is, of us are, as black mm. men are trapped in most of the yeah. time. Which is ultimately why I actually eventually couldn't get with Jesus. Oh. Um, mm. Well, one, I also thought it was a Death Grips album, mm -hmm. but, um, but that's a whole other argument. Um, thank you, person <laughs> back. <laughs> Death Grip fan in the house. I, 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 one of my snarky Facebook posts was, wow, 60 albums to make a, 60 artists, 60 musicians to make a Death Grips mm. record. Um, but I also, is this, is this, you, you, you I'm trying to use an example of, of rappers who I think really couldn't care less and transcended themselves. Um, like a Fuji's album, The Score. Mm -hmm. Or a Del Sol album like Balloon Main mm. State. Mm. Or even, quite frankly, Beastie Boys' Check Your Head. Yeah. One of the things I liked about Beastie Boys is that they remained the only rappers who ever said, you know what, we, we do be treated women was messed up and we're sorry. You don't have to make a big deal yeah, about yeah. it. It doesn't have to be a big epic thing. We can talk about Beastie Boys' place in hip hop for years. But I still, he just, he just said, yeah. you know what, so that was messed up. Yeah, I, you know what, that was messed up, and I'm sorry. Now I, let's get back to beats. Yeah, yeah. And uh, which is not, I, I, I don't want to, the thing is, I don't want to turn into a sort of a morality police as well, because I actually think hip hop's amorality is one of the best things about yeah. it. It's, it, 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 it's, yeah, it's yeah. I like the fact that it will always be a jagged pill for you to swallow. Screw you all. Notice I'm being polite. I want to be so funny. <laughs> um, you know, but it's, it's, it's my, what I worry about Kanye and, and, I, and I worry about um, Kendrick and, and I don't see it happening to Drake yet and Kanye used to resist this is when they do look at growth as a black man it's always the bootstrap model mm. and I have no patience Do you, do you think he falls into that? No. Sometimes he threatens to do it. This is one thing mm. that was always great about this. I, I can't I always 
no matter how much he plays around, I still end up in Team Kanye because mm. you will never get as simplistic as Kendrick gets. Yeah, and see, and I think I think so. Complete, completely agree. Mm -hmm. At the same time, Jesus actually is one. So look, you know, uh, sort of full disclosure, I just started writing a book about hip hop, and the only way I've sort of got the energy to write a sort of forty-year history of hip hop is yeah. actually because of Jesus and yeah. a very few mm -hmm. other yeah. albums, because it kind of has that level of invention to it, but also because it does. Every single one of the things you've just talked about yeah. it is about the, you know, the fact that in the end it's, it's not perfect because of, because of all the kind of sexual politics. But actually, in a way, that itself is an expression of everything that's happened. Mm -hmm. All of the discourse that black masculinity has mm -hmm. about itself and has had in the popular arena over the course of time. Interestingly, mm -hmm. like, it's... Do, you know, the sort of the blessing and the curse of a, of a Kanye is that he's our generation's Miles, da Miles Davis. The difference yeah. is he uses words, so you yeah. get to hear what he thinks as well, yeah. which is a mixed blessing, yeah, yeah. it turns yeah, out. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. Yeah. But part of it too is that is, I get the sense with Kanye is that, and the sense I would get with Kanye that I never would get with Miles, or with Chuck D, or even Ice Cube, mm -hmm. is that I think he thinks he knows as much as he needs to know. Yeah, that's a good point. At least, at least, yeah, you're right, intellectually, yeah. if not artistically. Yeah. No, but there, but, there but, was but, some you know what, but now, now, let me yeah, say. So the interesting <laughs> is, so I, I started off saying... I swear we know, all love Kanye. Yeah, I, I started off saying, if we'd been talking about this a while ago, we'd be talking about Public Enemy. And that's true. But the most <laughs> impressive thing about Public Enemy mm. was, again, the fact that their gender politics was so hidebound. Mm -hmm. Reference the early 70s was about the kind of, this kind of, well, that they were actually closer to a kind of 50 cent model mm. of the black masculine than a Kanye figure and so on. Mm -hmm. So I'm not actually trying to make a, a distinction between... No, but, I, but with one, Kanye, sometimes it's quite endearing when you're listening to one of his rants. You, you, in your head, you're thinking... Yeah, yeah, you yeah. don't realise how far you are from knowing what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. You know, but, you're a okay, long so, way <laughs> so, from knowing what... So, really uh, understanding so the subject it's, you're it's, pontificating about. Yeah, but, yeah, but, but, but the thing about a Kanye discussion is that it keeps spiralling, spiralling. Because also, yeah, like, yeah. Kanye is like black privilege. Yeah. I didn't know yeah. we had that. Yeah. No, but you see, but... But, but, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. but, but hold on, but here, like, here's the interesting thing. Like, if, I think <laughs> if, you're, if you're talking about Kanye and his significance in hip-hop, right... This is a middle class, essentially a middle class kid. You know, his mother was an English teacher, you know, mm -hmm. single parent, but you know, he's a kid with middle class sensibilities who grew yeah. up in, in a lower middle class situation, mm -hmm. right? And what he symbolizes in hip hop, his rage is, is basically the rage of the bourgeoisie. This is the rage of somebody mm -hmm. who is yeah. aware of what power is yeah, like yeah. and is angry that he's not got it. And so, then, so the, what uh, makes what, him, what, what, one second, yeah. one second. So what makes him so, <laughs> I'm going to jump in, right? Yeah, we're, 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 All right, here we go. So what makes it so <laughs> fascinating is that when you had like, like the earlier period of hip hop where you had like Russell Simmons, you know, coming up, making mm. his money in hip hop, then you had like the Jay-Z's and the early 2000s and the Puffy's who were then realizing, look, we can be pop artists here. They were kind of excited that they were suddenly in the arena with the mm. pop artists. Mm -hmm. Kanye is, in a, is as, a, as somebody of a newer generation with a different sensibility saying, I'm not interested in being a pop artist. I'm not interested in being able to kind of sit at the table with Taylor Swift or the, I want to be the Beatles. I mm. want to be like David Bowie. You know, I am David Bowie and Nile Rodgers in one. You know, mm. I'm all these things, <laughs> right? He is, he, is, he is dissatisfied with anything but the absolute yeah. pinnacle. And that's because mm -hmm. he's coming from a, a sense of privilege mm -hmm. and a sense of kind of entitlement. That's the importance mm. of Kanye. And that's one of the things that I just, the, 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 one of the things that I actually find electrifying about him is his, his sense of entitlement. Mm. Uh, you know, his no, no, Kanye will not be sitting in, at, at the, the Gucci show. I'm doing Balmain. And he will say it in the third person. Yeah. And, and again, it's, it's, but you see, it, it still goes back again to, to the, 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 um, the, the elegance being the ultimate black rebellion. It's Jack Johnson strutting in yeah, yeah, yeah. with two white girlfriends yeah. in the South. Yeah. It's you basically, know? look, basically, like, in a, I agree with that. I kind of, I'm always, I'm slightly suspicious of elegance. Because mm -hmm. actually, one of the, I think, really important aspects of art is, uh, is bad taste, mm -hmm. is an ability to go beyond taste to a place that well, is... Well, you haven't seen his new line for Adidas. <laughs> is, you know, is potentially... <laughs> so is he, so is video with his wife? Adidas person? Yeah, 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 so yeah exactly. Nick Knight, yeah, is, is yeah. a really bad so video. So is really potentially, bad. you know, really, is potentially really vulgar. Yeah. 
But where you're trying to figure out, look, is this real? Is this a game? What's going mm-hmm. on here? And so on and so on. And actually, and to, 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 to come to your point, Matthew. So this thing about, so absolutely you agree, you're right. This kind of, um, this thing of, uh, of kind of privilege and so on. But I think one of the interesting things about that is, again, he's working in yet another lineage, which is, uh, which is the sort of black autonomous artistic zone. So when the artist stands up on stage and decides not to be, not to make sense, in mm-hmm. fact, not to kind of, not to Somewhere. be an entertainer. Mm-hmm. So you're talking Nina Simone, when she comes back after how many years, absent from the stage mm-hmm. in, um, where is it, in Switzerland, yeah. and does a gig and seems kind of dissociated from the audience, is not quite sure what's going on, then starts berating the audience for not listening and not sitting up well enough and so on. You know, mm-hmm. you're talking about those moments, you're talking about Lauren Hill at the um, uh, MTV Unplugged where she starts crying on stage and mm-hmm. kind of rambling. Doesn't make sense. And those people are always called mad or whatever at those mm-hmm. moments of time. But the Kanye rant makes no sense at all. But the point is, the really important point is that he's holding the stage at that point and he's, mm-hmm. not, he's not letting go of it. That's not, it's not a good thing per se but it's an artistic statement in its own right yeah what, what he's done as well though which is really interesting is he's, he's shifted the narrative because one of the things that in my work and in what, what i've written about within law and outside of law is, is the sense is a sense of identity and a sense of subscribing to identities so the the, the classic narrative within hip-hop and within reggae music mm. is the kind of person from the hood made good mm. right that's the story and everybody felt no matter even if you were from like the richest family in the world. You had to kind of insert yourself into, to be a real black man, you had to insert yourself into the kid from the hood, maybe, you know, I came up rough on the streets, I made it up, now I'm, you know, mm-hmm. I'm, mm. I'm in the game and it's all saved me from kind of, you know, shooting everybody and killing everybody, right? That was, <laughs> that was the kind of analysis, right? And Jay-Z is an example yeah. of that, you know, like yeah. for all his amazing achievements and for mm. all his kind of groundbreaking stuff, he's, it's still very much within that storyline of, I was from the hood and now I've made it. Kanye isn't talking about those things. He's one of the few mm-hmm. artists within hip hop who really isn't talking just about either partying or just about I was selling drugs and now you know mm. I'm kind of mm. in the game. It's a different conversation about angst, about self doubt, about about wanting to jump off buildings because he's kind of trapped within his own mm-hmm. messed up mind. You know, so that's what makes it really fascinating. The difficult thing for me, though, the thing that I really struggle with, if we're talking about manhood. You know, as mm. we're hearing black masculinity and that kind of thing, what is m- the most liberating thing as a black person, as a black man in particular, is a breadth within what it is to be black, a mm-hmm. flexibility and a broadness in what it is to be black. In other words, that your sense of being a black person is not confined in a narrow way mm. to, a, to a simplistic story, you know, that you don't have to be from the hood selling drugs and make your way up you know, killing all the other drug dealers to be a real black person. You could be a black biker or a black mm. chess player or a black scientist, you know, you could, well, not Ben Carson, but you know, you could be all these, <laughs> you could be all these like interesting things and still be as black as anybody else just in terms mm. of, you know, all these things apart. Whereas tr- the trouble with hip hop sometimes is that it condenses that to something yeah, yeah, too narrow. Yeah. And Kanye really hasn't gone far enough in expanding that. He's getting there, yeah. he's, he's there, but that's mm. the bigger conversation we need to mm. have about what it is to be black within, mm. hi- with, within popular culture mm. that isn't just about being the guy from the street. But I think that's a bigger, I think that's, I, I, I would throw, I, would, I mean, I, would, I wouldn't just blame Kanye, I'd blame, I'd blame society for that, I'd blame us for that. Because I still think we, we have these only two narratives, and I actually think they're the same narrative. The, the, again, the sort of, I came from the hole, but I made good or I'm going to be a responsible father and such and such and such and such. Yeah. And they're both, they're both accumulative. And so you either have the hood model or the bootstrap model. Mm. And, 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 and that's, the model, that's the model we still feed ourselves. Mm. So it's, um, he's not the only one who has some growing up to do, I think. I mean, I mean you're yeah. right. I mean, in fact, I mean, there are actually there are creative arenas where black male expression goes further, which actually mm. tend to be you know, visual, in art and in literature, actually, in mm. fact. They're, but it's the more, the more kind of popular realms mm. of, you know, film, yeah. music, it becomes much harder because, mm. you know, as much as anything else, and this isn't a sort of cop-out, it's a boring way to think about it, but as much mm. as anything else for economics, there's more mm. at stake almost, you know, there's more at mm. stake in a Kanye album. But you yeah. you take but a kid but like Drake, half-Jewish kid from Canada, still has to pretend he's like, 
from the hood. He's a massive talent, but he has to, he has to right. create that's his own personal yeah, story all, to like have credibility, even remember? though he's a great talent. You yeah, know? It's, 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 it's the tragedy of Boss. Remember Boss? The female rapper, a gangster oh, rapper, yeah, Boss. Yeah. When they found out she was a PhD candidate <laughs> and was not from the hood and then, you know, cap her, you know? Yeah. Cap somebody's ass every day. Yeah, yeah, And she, she you know, she vanished. But the thing is, the, the, to, to come back to pro Kanye Cam, yeah, yeah. Um, that there are things, this is what I liked. About, the thing I liked about Jesus, funny enough, is sometimes the thing, the, the, you know, I can talk about the huge cast of people he has on it, and there's some musical choices I did not like, like mm -hmm. what he did with Strange Fruit. But the fact that a rapper could be working with somebody like Arca, mm -hmm. um, you know, that's, I mean, that, that's tantamount to Ice Cube and Boy George doing yeah, a song yeah. Yeah. where Ice Cube sings Boy George's <laughs> lyrics. Uh, it would never, it, it's yeah. never, I mean, I mean, Arca is such this sort of shape shifting in terms of his gender identity, in terms of his music. Um, and Arca is crucial to Jesus. Mm -hmm. And the, the, and the, you know, even before when he came out with this statement, I think, you know, hip hop needs to, move, hip -hop needs to end this homophobia bullshit. Um, that, what it complicates him is that for every, every yep. dumbass thing he says, he uses something that's kind of profound. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, uh, and and for every and, and in terms of, now can you imagine if if Lord Jamar showed up at the Jesus sessions, who is this drag queen? Yeah, yeah. Working on anything, you make him touch you, mm. uh, and you're gonna do that. Is this, and, 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 and we can talk about the hypocrisy of brand new Ben another day. Mm. Um, but the thing is, I think here's what I think. I don't think I think it's not necessarily. Although they will say it's real hip hop versus whatever he is, I think it's one performance not liking another performance is now superseding it. Mm. And the 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 one thing I'll say, and I'm not sure, I can only speak from very personal experience. If when I was growing up as a teen, I could have I could have really used a complicated rapper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I could have really used yeah. one. Because even when that song "Who Got the Props" came out, I thought they locked, they locked me out. Mm. Cause yeah, I, I, I like breath, that's yeah, what I'm I like yeah, and and until that time, I never knew there was a should in hip hop. Mm. You must be this or you must be that. Um, you know, Diggable Planet's video has KRS One in it. Mm. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, you see some of those old videos, even the, the most the, the the freakish most out there, and you look all the people doing the crowd shot. You know, Del the Funky Homo Sapien. There's Ice Cube. So the the, the that division. And this sort of, um, well, this is what, this is creating this ridiculous male archetype, which comes in reggae yeah. quite a bit. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. Even more so. Even more so. I mean, the, uh, what makes Kanye interesting for me as well at this stage is that you can already see in the best traditions of hip hop that his, what he's inspired is emerging to be disruptive yeah. of him, right? Mm -hmm. so, so at the moment, you know, like his, the way he's taken this interest in, you know, because his kind of creative mind and megalomania is so kind of overpowering. He, music's not mm -hmm. big enough for him. He has to go into fashion and this and that, mm -hmm. right? You know, that whole kind of strand of ASAP Rocky and that kind of whole mm -hmm. new uh, post-Kanye kind of uh, people coming after him who are making really interesting mm. music, which is really like rock and roll. I mean, but rap mm -hmm. version, it's like fashion, have you, have you, drugs. Have you you know, it's about a hard life of yeah. just kind of crazy groupies. Have you, have you, just have you yeah. talked about the sad boy rap movement? The what? Sad boy rap. There's a whole yeah. subgenre of like well, hip hop. Like Chance? No, not, not even ch like Chance, but people like Little Pain. Um, who else is in there? <laughs> sorry, like, sorry sad. Williams. Sad. There's yeah. basically like a whole well, subgenre yeah, of rap, which is but about sad. But 808's and Heartbreak, really. Yeah. That's yes, what I'm saying. exactly. Uh, Opened uh, up the There's a number of things that Kanye did which trigger things yeah. that then can allow yeah. people to then, creative people to jump off in different directions. Yeah, like, so you're seeing all these mm. artists who are really jumping off from what yeah. Kanye, what was all part of Kanye's brain yeah. five years ago. You know, it's yeah, fascinating. Like, like to, me the most, the, 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 to me the most fascinating example of that right now is Young Thug. Mm -hmm. And I stayed away from Young Thug because I don't want to listen to somebody named Young Thug. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then here comes a guy with his bleach blonde yep. dreadlocks. He has a habit for wearing dresses. Yeah. Um, you know, he, he has his obsession, uh, an obsession with, um, with Lil Wayne. Mm. Yeah. Uh, uh, but, uh, and, and, uh, and half see, of the times when he's rapping, I'm like, 
what, what is this sort of inverted Grace Jones Iggy Pop bullshit? And then he will drop five lines. Like, yeah. Holy shit. Yeah, yeah. But you're right, that's a Kanye, that's a post Kanye. Yeah, rapper. all of it is. Even Drake. I was looking Even at the Drake. Hotline Bling video yesterday. Drake is emo. Yeah, Dra Drake, Drake is sort of genius because all of the ways he's not overtly masculine wouldn't have been allowed a few yeah. years ago. And it's post, yeah? it's post Kanye. I'm, yeah, we're, we're going to go to. And it's, sorry, we've but been, we're going to go to I questions, but yeah. Just leave it echoing your point. But why is it though that when they try to come back in camp masculine, it's dog in woman? Mm. Yeah. If that's the best we can do. Yes. Um, questions from the audience? So we've, we've been heavy on the Kanye. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, is there, have we got a oh, mic? There's a, yeah, oh, there's a mic okay. person coming. Hi, can I just say you guys have completely ruined my afternoon. I was coming here for a slating of Kanye. And you guys oh. <laughs> yeah, you're in the wrong I place. Can't yeah. believe, I can't believe we've discussed his potential genius. <laughs> Sorry. A man who gets up and interrupts Taylor Swift and then a week later is begging the press for forgiveness. I mean, we know he's not genius. If you like certain things about him, fine. I'm much happier discussing Chuck D and his genius. <laughs> See, this, uh, can we not just place Kanye West as a bit better than Lady Gaga? So, well, hold on. What, 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 wait, 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 wait. But was... Yeah, but was... was but, was, but, was, but, was, but was Chuck the genius when he was singing Sophisticated Bitch? Mm. Well, can we also No, not... I'm just saying, was, well, was he a genius when he was singing Sophisticated Bitch? Chuck D. Hang on a second. Three weeks ago, in The Guardian of all newspapers, he's made specific reference to that, and he said completely... I mean, Jesus, if, if, if Spike Lee can make a mistake in his film, she's going to have it. And he's been apologising for that for 30 years. I think... Can't, well, we're, still not, we're not 30 Dee years past Kanye yet. One song, and Chuck D's well, already apologised. I think what I would say, though, is, is Kanye... From, to, to me, Kanye is an artistic genius in the way that, you know... This, this is likely to get some people annoyed, but R. Kelly is an artistic genius, yeah. right? Really is, but right? But, 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 all I would say is, but both of them are not geniuses when it comes to political sensibility or intellectual argument in certain areas. That, that, you know, there, there are limits into what they, but just as, you know, you're a, a great politician would not necessarily be a genius if you put him in front of a keyboard. Kanye West is a genius, and R. Kelly is a genius in their particular ways of making music. And that's why we're talking about R. Kelly the genius. Mm. I mean, sorry, Kanye West the genius, <laughs> rather than, you but know. Why, but why do we, so, but why do we, why, I, have, I, I wonder about this sort of political sensibility. Nobody's asking for Radiohead's political sensibility. Mm. Nobody's no. asking for Bonnie Vera's no, political but, sensibility. No, so but hold on, but I, I'll take you up on that, right? I'll yeah. take you up on that. The reason for that is because within black popular culture, yeah. our music, has, been, has had a particular significance as a rallying cry for what, is, what happens politically and also as part of our identity. So one of the things that's most interesting at the moment is the, within black popular culture, in my view, is that for the first time in maybe 20 years, the Black Lives Matter movement mm -hmm. and what you saw, I don't know if everybody's aware of what happened at um, University of Missouri yeah, football yeah. team mm -hmm. and how the football team refused to play. It would have cost the university a million dollars because they wouldn't have played. And as a this college football team, and as a result, the uh, dean of the of university had to resign because the black students and the students at the university felt he wasn't dealing with discrimination on the campus properly. This wasn't people getting killed on their campus. This was about just racial discrimination on the campus. And the football players, which was almost unprecedented in terms of athletes getting involved in a dispute like that, refused to play, boycotted the team until the dean resigned. So what you've got emerging within 20-something black kids in the African Americans is a a sense of political interest and identity, mm -hmm. partly through the Black Lives Matter movement, that is fascinating. And I think, to, to take up your point, that will be articulated through music. Mm -hmm. And when it is, it will be as interesting and as dramatically political as Chuck D mm -hmm. was. But, but that's, well, why, that's why the politics for us in our music actually, that's why you know, Bob Marley is politics as well as culture mm -hmm. and art. And that's why hip hop is politics as well as culture. Mm. Yeah, but one of the things I liked about Kanye, funny enough, is that I but that I like the idea of of a black artist existing in no other context but himself. Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. Not, it's, yeah. It's, I don't think it's a one or the other. Why I can't agree, the music yeah. be that big? Yeah, yeah. I agree. I agree. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, questions. 
uh, just gentlemen all the way over here. We still don't know what Prince is like to it. Well, um, I mean, th 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 there's also one of the other things, which is the, the peculiar nature of hip hop, which is that it, it's almost, almost always cast in the first person. And so you get this confusion between the performer and the person. And Kanye blurs that more than almost anyone. So it feels like mm. everything he says on those records comes from him, although he also employs ghostwriters to write his raps for him. So there's a, sort of, there's a kind of very curious thing. You do, however, get moments when it all comes together. So another sort of pro-Kanye moment. Um, <laughs> you know, George Bush doesn't like black people which is a moment when all of these things, when yeah. his kind of loquacious, his uncontrollable kind of, um, kind of logoria and kind of mm -hmm. desire to talk spills out something that's absolutely true and absolutely honest and absolutely politically meaningful mm -hmm. at the right time. So in a way, I'd almost take all of the other stuff. That's, that's the thing, with me, that's why I can't listen to because he will say something like that. Yeah. I, this president doesn't care about black people. Yeah. And Mozart and Wagner probably would have tweeted in all caps as well. <laughs> <laughs> um, other question? Yeah, just here. Um, just to follow on from that, I wonder, um, talking about separating the artist from their art, someone like um, Tyler, the creator, who has very controversial lyrics, but will openly say in public, no, no, that, that's just a persona. Mm. Does that redeem him? And does he need to redeem himself in that way? I don't think he needs redeeming. I think um, it's, it's, it's I, I, don't think, I don't think Johnny Cash has ever explained I shot a man just to watch him die. He doesn't, and, 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 he's, and he also was willing to take the, take the hits mm. um, for, for, for letting it stand. I don't think, yeah, yeah, I don't know. I think um, one thing is I like, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, very, I'm, I'm very fascinated by Odd Future, for example, because they, it's not just the society they're pissing off. They also piss off um, black people for their, like, one, their huge anti-religiosity. Mm. You know, they're so anti-God, which, I mean, the, black America, is, the church is still a foundation of everything. Not, yeah. even, not even Kanye would ever do something mm. like that. And, uh, it's, you know, what is this, I don't remember what did they rhyme something with Jesus and disease or something like that. I can't remember who rhymed it. Mellow hype having an inverted crucifix on an album mm. cover. It's like yeah, you know, it's like um, back in the eighties when nobody would admit that they were a black goth. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think on your point, I, I, I think there is. I think it's wrong. I mean, I'm a I'm a I work within the context of freedom of expression and defending people in relation to freedom of expression. I wouldn't ever inhibit an artist from saying, using any word, using any expression to say what they want to say. At the same time, you can't pretend that those things aren't problematic. You know, you can't pretend that there isn't a real problem with misogyny in hip hop. There really, mm -hmm. really is. In fact, it's worse than, I mean, you could say there's homophobia in hip hop, but the misogyny is almost like just mm. there permanently as something that's okay. I mean, and, and also just kind of the way we've co-opted things to a point of extremity that, that makes it meaningless. I, 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 um, when Kendrick Lamar's new album came out, as I was having a conversation with somebody, it was an experiment. We decided to listen to the track and to switch off the track when the word nigger or bitch came up. Like just, we didn't get through any track. Not, seriously, not one but track, you know, but not you know one, what? right? Whereas, yeah. hold on, whereas yeah. if you listen to a tr uh, uh, any rap music b before 1990, you know, so I'm, talking, I'm not talking about like really weird stuff you never heard of. I'm talking about like, you know, golden er years of rap, you know, Public Enemy, you know, Eric B. Rock, him. You could listen to the whole album from start to finish and you'll never hear those. Now, that's not because it was so virtuous and wonderful, but it's because somehow those things have become really normalized. And I think we, we have to kind of actually from time to time examine how healthy it is for those sorts of things to just be part of the normal expression. I mean, I, I think... It's, 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 
it's an, it's an entirely fair point, but I would take the unfashionable point, which is that I think artists are allowed to work within vernic vernacular lineage. Sure. And mm -hmm. there's such a strong and problematic uh, black oral tradition when it comes to using some of those words that actually part of the art becomes those words. I'm not saying that's a good thing. I'm not even trying to justify it. But for me, that's some of the context within mm -hmm. which someone like Kendrick uses the N word or the B word. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, just gentlemen, just, yeah, just here, yeah. Hey, um, there, my perception, there's some artists that have tried to kind of like move the needle or do some good in uh, you know, a tribe called Quest, um, uh, the Black Monks, if you ever heard of them, and even like the Wu-Tang Clan, like tries to have like a message, you know, maybe it's like the martial arts thing, but like, <laughs> <laughs> no comment on his, on his acting skills, but, um, is there an interest in more, uh, in more of an um, actual, actualized message than I came from the hood and I did good? Like, is there a market for that? Yeah, look, the, 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 the main thing that's happened, I think one of the big things that's happened in rap over the last couple of years is this space for introversion that's opened up. It's the absolute opposite of the, you know, public enemy kind of, uh, kind of political consciousness. Uh, it's, it's not the same at all as tribe and, and native tongues. But what it is, and, we, and we, we've been talking about it, what it mm -hmm. is is this space for self-reflection. What it is is this space to admit vulnerability and to admit imperfection and to have that as part of a narrative of what it can mean to be young and black. Interestingly, allowing that space for imperfection then means that well, the stuff you hear isn't necessarily stuff you like. Mm -hmm. In fact, it actually means that, that, that you then get stuff that can piss you off or annoy you for various reasons to do with the language that's used and so mm -hmm. on and so on. But actually, again, you know, pretty much starting with Kanye, going to Kendrick, you know, look, I'm going to use this as a really trivial point, but I, re but I kind of mean it at the same time. So there's a Drake track, last but one Drake album, a track called Energy, where Drake is sort of banging on about how difficult his life is. And, uh, you know, he's got a mortgage for 30 million. And, <laughs> you know, and then there's, there, there's a sort of great and ridiculous line in there where Drake talks about how there are too many women coming around his apartment. And, you know, they're always asking him for the code for the Wi-Fi. And it really pisses him off. <laughs> and then they want to show him their timeline and talk about how their friends aren't really their friends on there. And I love the fact that's yeah. where we've come to. You know? I love that too. Like, I absolutely... I love it. I love that um, because... Uh, you know, as a, as a novelist, I get hit with that all the time as well. You know, this, um, you know, why 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 aren't you showing a, a bit, why aren't you being a sort of a literary role model? Why aren't you showing the good pictures of 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 Jamaica or so on? Or why aren't you more socially committed? When I just want to talk about somebody's how somebody's here looking this TV show versus some other thing. And the idea that the the, the other thing is is that there is no hip hop central. Anymore, yeah, yeah, yeah. and and uh, hip hop is 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 big enough for for all of that, uh, and and the, the it's, 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 you want you know it's funny. Um, oh God, you know who said this? Who who's the one who said um, there are people who keep talking about how they wish hip hop would come back to all? I can't remember who said it. it may have been it may have been Kanye. It may have been um, Vince Staples. Like, mm -hmm. um, everybody talking about we want to get back to the real, yeah, yeah. we want hip hop to come on point, we want hip hop to have a good message, we want hip hop to come back to meaning something, then how the hell did Killer Mike not have a platinum that was, record? That was Kendrick. Kendrick, yeah. so yeah. if everybody yeah. really wanted that, Killer yeah. Mike would have been platinum. Yeah. So cut the bullshit. Yeah. It's, 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 it's hard enough throwing that, that lack of a, of a concern about the bigger picture on the rapper yeah. when a fan doesn't want it either. But to answer the gentleman's question, like, the only, I mean, as someone that represents artists in work, whatever, <laughs> the only responsibility mm. of an artist is to make good art, mm. right? There is no other responsibility. There's no responsibility to make a message. There's no responsibility mm. to say things which people like or don't like, just to make good art. And usually good art comes out from being truthful. So as a result, just truthfully making good art is the only responsibility. But within that framework, mm. We want to be interested. What makes good art is something that interests us, and, and the truth interests us. So the reason why Drake talking about his Wi-Fi, or to go back a bit, you know, why Marvin's Room by Drake is such a kind of whoa moment in kind of you know hip hop R and B is because 
it's really truthful. This is somebody talking about some actual crap that they do in their ordinary life, mm -hmm. which you can really, I, that is really keeping it real. You know, it, pretending you're running around with a gun in the street shooting everybody is actually not being mm. real. Talking about how your Wi-Fi is or isn't working is actually <laughs> being real. And it, and it connects. It, it, look, it connects, you know? Yeah. yeah. Um, this gentleman, yeah. To, no, yeah, just down, yeah. Oh. Um... So, hi, thank right. you. Um, so, I've noticed, at least within the last two or three years, um, the, the, I, I work with a lot of young adults, um, young and teenagers as well, and the focus isn't so much stateside, but there's a real big surge in the UK in terms of artists mm. and music, especially grime. Mm -hmm. So, as, as big as hip-hop is stateside, there's a massive, big, big drive grime-wise yeah. here. I love grime. And, um, <laughs> In your view, who is the Kanye in the UK in mm. regards to an artist and, and hip-hop-wise? Because I don't think hip-hop is as... Because you could talk about maybe gigs or, mm. or say, section boys, because that's yeah. what... Or, but again, really? what we're talking... But again, in saying that, in saying <laughs> grime, in saying hip-hop, there's that big... Because this year, there's yeah. this, yeah. this, see, year, there's I, this I, kind I, of big I mix in terms of how it works. I, mm -hmm. So no. who would you think, in terms well, of UK, what is, I'm what is a, what, I, mean, I, I, I mean, I'm the foreigner, so I'm not in a position. But I remember, for enough, the type of discussions we're having about Kanye, I, I remember how complicated Boy in the Corner was. Mm -hmm. um, you know, even, uh, even um, the song where, where, where you know, the girl comes out in that your girl, and it's like a complicated story. It, it, that was gone by the second mm. album, but that kind of um, even there, the sort of the the, the, the huge self doubt and the braggadocio at the same time. But I yeah, know, I, th I think it's tricky because I think I think a lot of UK artists, you know, really good and really proficient. But I think this, this but no, no, no I'm not gonna, I, that's, that wasn't a setup for a kind of, it, It's basically that they're still trying to claim territory, you know. There's still like it's still a sort of gold rush stage with a lot of them. In as much as there's a you know there's a lot of there's a lot there's records to sell and so on and so on. And what you don't have is this sort of fourth, fourth, fifth wave where artists are in a position where actually they're working off you know what's gone before. They're selling a lot of records and now they can actually stand back and do something. So, what I would say. What I would say. Sorry. I just think, give them so time. But, but, but also, but what, I would, what I would say is that, that within the context of, of black music in particular, you get music that's local. And within its localities, it's amazing music because it speaks to that locality. So you get, you know, within the Caribbean, you know, if you're Jamaican heritage like me, you've got reggae music. But within the other islands, you've got, you know, their own types of music, you know, soca, whatever, that, you know, has its, that is amazing within those environments. And similarly, each little section of the US has its own version of hip hop, or sometimes something that's not hip hop. You know, in DC they have go go, you know, in other mm -hmm. places they have different music. And grime, formerly garage, before that, you know, jungle, drummer bass, whatever, you know, grime is our local music, right? And it's amazing within the locality, but it doesn't travel. It's not yet got to the maturity where, or there are random examples, but generally speaking, it's not at that level of maturity. Now, the, the challenge is how do you get it at that level of maturity? But hip hop, and maybe I'm biased, I'd argue reggae music, transcends its locality. It, it somehow managed to develop a level of maturity mm -hmm. that's beyond its being local music. And at the moment, grime is still local music, even though it, a lot of yeah. it's great. No, that's a challenge because how do you, how do you reach out without selling out? And that's, and, and that's the great thing about hip hop and reggae, they both managed to pull it off. Uh -huh. MC Hammer notwithstanding and, <laughs> and um, all of that. La lady over here with, with the mic. Yeah. Hi. Um, earlier you talked about like, there only being really one narrative, even though it sounds like two, with bootstrapping versus hood mentality. And then mm -hmm. someone talked about Drake, I think, subverting masculinity. Mm -hmm. But is that really what he's doing if in, say, Hotline Bling, he's really being as misogynistic as anything else under the veil of being emo? Because mm -hmm. it's still like, but you're not calling yeah, me yeah. and you're not with me and you're living your life and mm -hmm. I hate that. Isn't that really the same message? Yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah, I mean you know, I wouldn't disagree. I mean, you know, I like, I like Drake because he's a kind of a doofus. I like that fact about yeah. him. That doesn't make him a great man, you know? I mean, you're right. That that record is a brilliant record, but it's yeah. annoying as hell at the same time for exactly yeah. those reasons. But I is that the only way it can look in the mainstream? But I kind of agree with you. But I think it's a bigger it's a bigger thing. It's it's one of the problems I've had with the black arts movement. 
that is a problem that I had with even friends, or, you know, poets that I respect, mm. that even, even when they're saying these visionary things politically and racially, they're still dogging women. Mm. It's like it's yeah. still this unsophisticated attitude. It's, not, it's, 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 it's something I have with just black arts to begin with. That it's, um, whenever we load the gun, we fire the easy targets mm. first. You know, so the woman or the gay person or so on, we, yeah. we, we shoot the nearby target first. Yeah. And it's so, so to, yeah. Be, to be positive about it for the future, what I would say <laughs> is you, you do get a point at which when there's enough hunger for, the, for that alternative type of, of way of expressing yourself, it will emerge as, as being popular. In other words, if, if there's a truth in saying, actually, Drake's talking rubbish, there's a different story. If there's a truth in that, an artist will find that truth and that truth will be appealing eventually. Now, the, the problem is, is so for, I'll give you an example, because I'm old enough to remember when, pre-hip-hop, in the 80s, all the, talk, the songs were about kind of, it was all kind of Freddie Jackson, Luther Vandross, <laughs> Alexander O'Neill, you know, it was a kind of mushy, gushy form of, you know, what black love and black life was about, right? And hip-hop came and just exploded that by saying, this is all rubbish, there's an alternative story here that we're interested in talking about. And even when it comes to narratives about sexual relationships. You know, we move from these kind of, I love you, you love me, Isley Brothers, sexual relationship stuff, into like a hip hop, much more real version. Now, my own positive optimism is that if actually there's another story about relationships between men and women that current hip hop isn't describing and isn't talking about, someone will come along and describe it and everybody will get on board with that because it will be the truth. Yeah, yeah but that's happened before when it didn't do that. I mean, main source did looking out the front door. Mm. He wasn't good enough. Which is... What? What? The music wasn't good enough. What? The music wasn't good Rick enough. Rick and I was one of the greatest hip albums ever. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> um, a p- Lush, Q- look, I mean, Q-Tip. Yeah, yeah. Look, look, Even look. the last album. I mean, some of the songs on that album is probably the most sophisticated look at a breakup ever. Um, and it was popular. But, I, you know, I, th- I think, I think, look, I think, the, you know, I, I don't want to sort of just broad it out to that's just society. Look, but, you know, one of the things that, it, it, you know, it will, it will take exceptional genius, both artistically and lyrically, to do more than uh, push some things, but also work within other constraints, you know? Some, you know, some of the tragedy of our time is exactly that we live in this, you know, in, uh, you know, in a sort of gender imbalanced society. And hip hop becomes a reflection of that, frustratingly, even when it's doing some things that are extraordinary. I think, you you know, I think you made a really good point, Matthew, earlier that, that, that all of this music, black music, sits within a sort of larger context of kind of social and political kind of, um, uh, importance so one of my hopes is that you can listen to whatever it is the drakes or whatever and you can listen to the frank oceans you know and there used to be a, a bigger divide between hip-hop and r&b and soul mm. it's less so right now so frank ocean part of odd future mm-hmm. and you know can be openly out in the ways that he's described himself and for mm. me that gives me some hope for at least how generationally things shift so you mm-hmm. don't have a sort of, you don't have some of the same overt challenges around. You can only be male mm. this way. That doesn't answer your point, and it's a really valid one. Mm. No, but I, I, I agree to that. That to me, to me, in a lot of ways, Frank Ocean is the most positive thing to happen in hip hop R and B in years. And it's not just because he, he came out. If, if you listen to even the the, the idea of an R and B singer, that I think you know, I think love is not between such and such. But marriage is not between mm. man and woman, but love and love. And that's when he was still dropping mm. mixtapes. Yeah. Um, that yeah, and and at certain, I mean, last time I checked, he wasn't doing badly. Mm. I mean, there, so there is hope. To, to take up uh, the, the lady's point here, though, I think what what is quite f- funny within hip hop is that you're right. Even when there are these moments of deep introspection, they pretend deep introspection sometimes. So it's kind of like, wow, I'm so troubled by my money. You know, <laughs> I'm, I'm so frustrated about I know, how I talented I am. You know, I'm so amazing. You know, yeah. it's this angst and this. You know, I'm going to bear my soul and be really vulnerable about my genius. You know, and that you're right in a sense is is kind of it's bearing your soul and being humble in a way that's actually kind of slightly being boastful as well. Yeah. Okay, look, we're going to take one last question, lady, right at the back there in the corner, and then that, that's our time. You maybe want to go back and listen to some old hip hop because I had this theory, working theory, that 
Every time a rapper tries to grow up, the audience leaves them. That's true. Yeah. That's really true. Yeah. There was a point that was made earlier that I absolutely loved about Kanye and ultimately power and privilege. And do you not think some of the reasons why he isn't liked by everyone is the, dis his dis the, dis the discomfort around when people of colour and women talk about being great or power and being powerful or having influence. And actually, um, it's one of the things that I love about him. So I would wear a T-shirt that says, I'd rather be a dick than a swallower, because personally, I, rather, I would. Um, because for me, in terms of what it, the, the statement around power there, I want to be on the powerful side. Mm. He doesn't want the scraps off the table. He believes he was already sitting at the table, and yeah. now he wants to be the person inviting everyone else around the table. Yeah. And that is uncomfortable for a lot of people. Com com you know, com completely right. Like, uh, you know, I may, who was I, was I talking about before? Was it Nina Simone? Mm -hmm. uh, Nina uh, yeah, Simone. so, you know, Nina Simone, exactly, you know, basically, look, the, it's about, you know, cool. So one of the black default positions is cool, elegance, and so on. Mm -hmm. One of the more, inter more interesting than that is how you can be visibly troubled, how you can piss people off, basically. How you realize that real coolness is about insouciance. It's not about, uh, I'm so cool and refined. It's kind of like, actually, look, I'm in my own autonomous space now. You know, I don't have to apologize for who I am and what I do. Again, that comes with... Uh, Aspects that then become difficult after that mm. pretty much for everyone, but it's an exciting place and actually it's I think it's really interesting generationally It's really interesting to see a figure like Kanye who's in the position He's in and what he does with it because mm -hmm. the story's not over But actually some of the things that have happened so far is we can have this kind of conversation about what power looks like right now And we wouldn't have had this conversation 20 years ago. Yeah I mean, where, where, I, where I think if, you know, you, you, you go home tonight and you want to listen to Kanye, like, you know, what I would say, right, is, is uh, <laughs> to the gentleman over here, right? So, so what I would say is, um, is very much on the, on the point of what you're saying. What you're, what you're listening to is somebody who is describing a moment within a kind of a cultural development in which you're saying, I don't want to be best on my block. I don't want to be king of the hood. I want to be the world. I want to be best in the world. The people who I'm assessing to set my standards of what I want to achieve are right up here and are the very best. They're not just the people who happen to be around me because I'm black or because I live in the hood or this or that. I want to be right there at the top. And Kanye's, the whole kind of relentless, self-destructive kind of energy mm. that is constantly underpinning everything that he puts out is driven by that sense of kind of, it's Nietzschean, you know, it's a will to power that he has. And that's in, in a sense, that's what makes it such an exciting kind of energetic rush of black music. And that, you know, I still wouldn't agree with the T-shirt, but, you know. <laughs> um, uh, I think that's, that's all we've uh, got time for. Uh, please join me in, in uh, welcoming Marlon James, Matthew Ryder. <laughs>